electric power is everywhere present in unlimited quantities and can drive the world's machinery without the need of coal, oil, gas, or any other fuel. This new power for the driving of the world's machinery will be derived from the energy which operates the universe, the cosmic energy, the cosmic energy, the cosmic energy, the cosmic energy. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at an alleged interview where Nikola Tesla stated that quote-unquote, everything is a delight. This interview surfaced a few years ago with a mostly unknown origin which claimed this was a quote-unquote hidden or banned interview of Nikola Tesla. Despite of this, many believe it is fake. In this video, I'm going to be looking at this interview, analyzing the core of the philosophy and the wisdom contained in it along the data dates and facts related to Nikola Tesla in order to debunk whether this interview is real or not, and just as importantly, what the theory discussed actually suggests. This is an in-depth look at the figure of Nikola Tesla. I will offer my final verdict at the end of the video, but one thing is certain, even if the interview is fake, it contains an in-depth understanding of Tesla's core philosophy, and the wisdom contained in it is thought-provoking and aligned with what the current research, ranging from quantum physics to altered states of consciousness, is suggesting. Before I move forward, I would like to remind you that if you want to join the growing discussion on consciousness and would like to be notified on the latest scientific discoveries and theories surrounding this topic and how they connect to ancient mythologies and philosophies, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, as I'll try to upload at least one video per week as I continue with the outline. Alright, so before moving forward with this third part of the interview, this alleged interview that Nikola Tesla allegedly gave to an occult publication in the 1900s, I want to make a quick disclaimer, and this is that um, this interview is going to be split into parts where I'm going to be looking at individual or a couple of themes of the interview, but these themes are themes that I've been looking at in this channel, things like ether, things like consciousness, things like ascension, there's a things that I've talked about in this channel and what I'm doing in this channel is offering references, uh, offering published research, offering data so we can build our minds about all these things. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy this part of the interview and you, you remember that you can find all of the links of whatever below in the description. Thank you for watching and uh, maybe we'll see you in the next one. All right, moving on with the, with the interview. Um, there's a couple of things that I found here that are quite interesting to me. Uh, it talks, uh, this whole conversation is about, uh, it's a little bit esoteric, Lucifer, Mark Twain, this Mark Twain, or the reason why they say, uh, it's a fake or so on and so forth. It's very, very elaborate to say the least. Uh, so it says right here, everything that we once saw, hear, read, and learn accompanies us in form of light particles to me these particles are obedient and faithful now i found this really really interesting because in this channel i've gone into a couple of theories a couple of uh, pieces of research that resonate with me regarding this so we're talking about light particles everything is light everything is light a particle so everything we want so here read and learn this is who you are your memories everything all the information you compilate throughout your life accompanies us in the form of light particles what are like light particles information energy at the core as, as we've been saying these particles are obedient and faithful according to tesla so this reminds me to the orchestrated objective reduction theory one of the most prominent theories of consciousness out there i made a video about it a theory of the soul uh the parents and camera of orchestrated objective reduction which at the core and i actually just made a short a couple of days ago about this um at the core the idea is that all of the information you compilate through your life exists as quantum information inside the microtubules in your brain and at the moment of death what happens is that this information links into a larger field as i said you want to call it the field of consciousness the quantum field if we're talking about quantum information and they join a larger quantum field what are we talking about what is quantum what is this energy that exists everywhere in air as it is stated in this interview related or allegedly by tesla he says that there's intelligence in the ether in the air in whatever we where we think there's nothing 
it's full of information so this information inside your brain this quantum information leaks into this larger field of consciousness if you may and this is the whole theory of the or coar theory and he's saying right here everything we want so here read and learn and coming is in the form of light particles so if everything is energy what are we talking about are we talking about quantum information are we talking about electromagnetic energy are we talking about energy are we talking about photons what, what what are we talking about the core we're talking about energy as i said it's interchangeable as it says here everything in the universe can at this core be explained by electromagnetic energy aka a light so as i said regardless of whether this was written by tesla or whoever wrote it they have an idea of what they're talking about and everything seems to be related so i'm going to link that or core theory now the second piece of research that it reminds me to i made some I made a video about research on how we store memories and how um, scientists are finding that there is not a region in the brain which holds your memories. The, the whole idea, what is in our books from the 90s, which a lot of people think that's the final truth about the universe, whatever is written in the books uh, in the from the 90s, is that uh, there's a region in the brain where when you go into a memory you go into that region of the brain where the memory is quote unquote stored and then you pull it out so all of these here what you hear what you read what you learn all the experiences everything is somehow stored like in some sort of an archive in your brain what they're finding out is that memories rather exist at the synapt synaptic cellular and molecular level what does this mean that when you think of a memory, literally your your neurons correlate in the way where when you experience those things. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the particles, the cells, all these little be all these little bits of information coming together for you to to go into a memory, and that memory is change with your current thoughts with whatever you want to add to it it's never as clear as the first time you saw it so you always add things or remove things this is a good tool also to deal with trauma you remove things or you make it as something different or you find a new meaning to it and you create new neural patterns so what they're saying is that these mem memories exist at the cellular level in the form perhaps of light particles as electricity from the neurons passing on electricity energy electromagnetic energy aka light we're talking about the same thing and what i'm what i what mainly bothers me about the whole thing is that people get lost in semantics and get lost in connotation when when this is why i, I put it in um in caps and everything light light because what i want to remove is getting lost in the semantics in this connotation we're talking about energy at the end of the day so i'm gonna link that uh research and all all that i'm talking about here is research is actual published research which i'm gonna link right now the one about memories i already linked the one about the or core theory and you can find them below if i run out of links all right so for this video i wanted to include the next parts of the interview with tesla goes in a little bit into marriage and some of this other information that i wanted to talk about but i thought it was very very important to isolate this specific part which is simply a paragraph of, of this interview because of the relevance of it because of the importance of it and uh, the whole background that it keeps us and now i have to address the big elephant in the room it seems that people are interested in tesla interested in the ideas and um the main counter argument that i've been getting when i'm uh, on social media and so on and so forth is um they think that because this interview is part of a play or is mentioned in a play or is is, is it, it it um the interview inspired most likely a theatrical play then everything in the interview is is not relevant perhaps because it wasn't a nikola tesla despite the fact that whatever this interview is whatever it actually is whether it's forced or whatever is real or enhanced or whatever it is looking into the ideas of tesla so regardless the point we're looking into the ideas of tesla now the reason why i am so puzzled by this interview is because whether it's Tesla or whether it's Stephen Peshik or whoever wrote the, this interview or whoever enhanced it is 
pure genius. We're looking into the ideas of a genius. Um, this is why I am thinking that maybe there's a remote possibility that this is an actual interview from Tesla, because what they are saying here in this paragraph, and I'm going to quote it again, everything we once saw, hear, read and learn accompanies us in the form of light particles. What they are doing here is describing exactly how consciousness might work. This is, in fact, the Orkoar theory by, by Perros and Hammerov, orchestrated objective reduction. Now, I'm, 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 I'm speaking about this as a post-editorial note, because I already spoke about this in the, in the video, what, what I just talked about. However, what I want to give you is I want to give you some dates so you can reference and you can make your own mind about the whole thing. So, as I said, the light particles. Why? Because we're talking about energy, energy. What type of energy, energy, information, what type Type of information, quantum information in the brain, everything we once saw here and read, learn, every piece of information that we translate with our brain comes in the form of quantum information. This is what the Orco R theory is saying. But now Tesla or whoever here is saying is in the form of light particles. What are synapses? What are neurons? How how do, the, do we see, if we open a brain in, and the brain is acting up, what do we see? We see these synapses, we see this action. This electricity is our thoughts We're talking about light. So whoever wrote this, whether it's Stephen Pashik, as I said, or, or Nikola Tesla, they're talking about exactly how consciousness works. This is no short of a genie, of genius idea. And then you tie the whole interview to it and... This is why I'm, 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 I'm really looking into where does this interview comes from. Now you can make the argument, oh, okay, so this was written in 2012, or this was written in, in like, you know, for the play, so somebody just uh, googled the Orco Art Theory, and they looked at it, they understood it, and they put it in a sort of a poetic way with an, a, 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 a deeply accurate insight into the mind of Nikola Tesla and they created this whole thing. They Googled the whole thing. Google, Google started to be Google. We started Googling things after 1998. This was 24 years ago as of making this video. The play, the play that people say that everything comes from this uh, theatrical play, this play started in 1995. So there was a pre-production of the play before 1995. So whoever forged, quote unquote, or, you know, made up this interview did it before Google existed. How did they no such things. How did they know the Orcoar theory? They didn't know the Orcoar theory because the Orcoar theory was created in, in the mid 90s. So in 1995, 1994 was the first iteration of it. 1995, I think, or 96 was the first publication or the official publication of this theory. And now in 1995, when we were looking at published research, we were not Googling how we were we are doing today. Today we can Google and we can look into these journals, these scientific journals. Before it was everything was isolated to academia and it was a very basic weird idea that nobody knew about. Then somehow in this interview, we, they are talking about the same thing. So what, what we're seeing here is that someone, whether Tesla or whether whoever forged this interview, came to the same conclusion that than a, a, a Nobel laureate Roger Penrose and an expert on their field, on uh, an anesthesiologist, Stuart Hameroff, came to the same conclusion. So now we, we, we come to very few possibilities or very interesting things that are happening here. Either we're looking into the mind of a genius, whether Tesla or whoever forced his interview, or what I'm thinking now coming fully honest, and I'm going to build upon this as I go with these videos. I think the interview was real. This was an occult interview for an occult publication. And then uh, it perhaps was hidden or banned or lost or whatever. Maybe it wasn't even because they were trying to suppress Tesla. But maybe it was just a random 
um, interview from an old age Tesla, which was just simply forgotten, or as they started to suppress all the ideas of Tesla, whoever whoever created it didn't want to really publish it, and just it was just written on journals. I don't know what's the source of this interview, but the content of it is puzzling me and is blowing my mind. So what I'm thinking is that somebody found this interview and they enhanced it um, to create it into into this theatrical play. And as I mentioned throughout the the video, do not believe me. It is not my opinion that this. Might, well, it kind of is that this might be how consciousness works. But and this is the relevance of me looking at this interview and taking all this this whole rabbit hole into Nikola Tesla, which I'm gonna keep going as long as it gives me something useful to chew upon. Um, I'm looking at two scientific. Research, pieces of research and one of the most important ones that we have the Orquhart theory and the other one is in neuroscience look at the action don't believe me don't don't get my word for it look at the research i published it i have this couple of videos i'm going to link them below one is the Orquhart theory and the other one is um, i i think i titled the video we don't store memories in our brain we, we never store memories we actually recreate the whole synaptic thing so this is actual published research so i'm gonna link them below this is this is the reference for it it's not my opinion that this might be how consciousness work is the current research that is catching up with everything If you're on the path of finding the truth about reality and our purpose as humans on Earth, the information that I have to share concerns you. After a lifetime of research in philosophies ranging from Buddhism to the occult, I've encountered themes and patterns along some baffling information that is beginning to be seriously studied by science. A rational divine outline, The Ghost of Jesus, is the first iteration of this project, where I analyze the message of Jesus without dogmatism, fanaticism or religious bias. You can find my work available on Amazon on the link below. If you find this work valuable, consider subscribing, sharing, and following me on social media as it will help others in the same path to find this information. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.